Thank you very much, dear President Saretelli, dear President Pasquier, dear Speaker Edgen, Secretary General Gramminger, Excellencies, distinguished parliamentarians, ladies and gentlemen. We had the opportunity for an exchange during your winter session in Vienna, and I'm very glad to be with you again. The topic you set for this session, advancing sustainable development to promote security, is both timely and urgent, as well as old and well established. The first is felt mostly as we aim and sometimes struggle to bring to life the Agenda 2030 and its sustainable development goals. The SDGs are bold, they are visionary, they are transformative, and they are urgent. But they did not come together overnight. In fact, groundwork had to be laid for years. And the major part of this began, I believe, in 1975 with the Helsinki Final Act, and hence my second point. Because that was the very beginning of what we now know as a unique feature of the OSCE, its comprehensive approach to security. When diplomats and dignitaries met in Helsinki, they acknowledged that security could not be viewed in a vacuum. They knew that they would need to focus on more than just tanks, artillery, and military positions to bring about lasting peace and security for people in the region. Instead, they looked around and they saw that security challenges are both prevented and exacerbated by many other issues, from trade and economic development to the pro protection of the environment and the promotion of human rights. Today, the OSC, through its field operations, autonomous institutions and secretariat continues to be active in both stable countries and conflict settings. It has its own expertise, its own prevention toolbox, its own local knowledge, and it can, I believe, uniquely contribute to achieving the sustainable development goals. And you, parliamentarians, have an important role to play. An increase in funding to schools, efforts to boost the participation of women in local governments, observing elections, these are the kind of activities that parliamentarians are participating in on a daily basis. They are not always labeled as goal four, quality education, goal five, gender equality, or goal 16, effective institutions. But they are examples of SDGs brought to life, thanks to the work of the OSCE. And your perspectives and lessons learned are so crucial to the process. Because as I told you back in February, you are the link between the OSC and the people it serves. You inform and inspire the work of our organization. And back then, I also spoke about the three priorities the Slovak chairmanship has set for ourselves for this year. So one, conflict prevention, two, safer future, and three, multilateralism. Well, we are at half time, and this is an opportunity to reflect on the work done but also on the challenges ahead. So let me take a few moments to do just that, while focusing on links between development and security. So to start with our pr first priority, preventing and resolving conflicts and mitigating their impacts on people. In the past six months, I visited all OSC field missions, and what I saw was a mixed picture. Situation that filled me with hope such as political leaders working hand in hand with the OSC, young people of different backgrounds, religions and ethnicities building democracies together, or vibrant civil societies. But at the same time, I could not overlook examples of despair. No bridges, no electricity, no phone connection. These images need to keep us alert. We, the parliamentarians, politicians, and policymakers are the ones expected to act, expected to help. We cannot simply wait for progress to happen. So while our chairmanship focuses on supporting solutions agreed at the negotiating table, we are also working on concrete measures aimed at improving the lives of people caught up in the midst of crisis. Or to put it bluntly, retaining focus on the big picture should not blind us 
to the urgent and real needs of people on the ground. So for example, in Ukraine, I have put forward nine concrete confidence building measures that should alleviate negative consequences of the crisis. We are actively supporting all initiatives to repair the Stanica Luhanska bridge so that people can cross to collect their pensions, to see their loved ones, or to get medical care needed. And though we might not headline our efforts as goal nine, resilient infrastructure, or goal three, good health, such steps for the betterment of the life of people contribute to advancing development and hence promoting security. Of course, all our efforts would be empty without necessary political engagement of the actors on both sides of the bridge. And in this context, I have welcomed recent disengagement of heavy armory on both sides. After President Zelensky's extraordinary success in the last presidential elections in Ukraine, we must use this window of opportunity to encourage further progress. But recently there have, there have also been situations when I had to express my concerns, as was the case on crossing point closures over the Anguri in Georgia. And here the situation is clear. Every restriction brings hardships for local populations. Every separation from family or land brings anguish. Every conflict stops people from realizing their potential. And it is precisely why the OSC is, is here, to help to prevent these scenarios. Moving forward means that we need to rediscover the OSC prevention tools. That's why I'm looking forward to welcoming the high number of fellow foreign ministers from the OSC participating states in Slovakia tomorrow for an informal gathering. We will discuss the role and the relevance of the OSC in future prevention efforts and how to better use the OSC's niche in fostering stability in Europe and beyond. When it comes to our second priority, safer future for all, we realize that our societies are different from what they were 44 years ago when our organization was founded. Today we need to lead dialogue on topics unimagined just a few decades ago. And while we must use our existing tools and practices, we need to keep our eyes open to see and to seize new opportunities. And this means also spotting ways how to advance the SDGs. Like SDG 16, on peace, justice, and strong institutions by promoting the security sector, governance, and reform agenda. To do so, we started a whole process of three regional workshops feeding into a special conference on the topic in September. Or SDG 5, on gender equality by promoting gender mainstreaming and gre greater participation of women in OSC efforts. And just last Friday, our chairmanship organized a workshop on promoting the role of women in addressing environment and security challenges. But if we are serious about the sustainable development, we need all parts of society to contribute. There are 1.8 billion people between the age of 10 and 24. We have the largest generation of youth in history, and we need to hear their voices and take them into account. So our chairmanship, together with the OSC Secretariat, is organizing a youth forum in October in Bratislava to strengthen our exchange. And we must be able to listen to their ideas, views, and perspectives to inspire and be inspired to build the resilience to violent ideas and behavior. That's why our chairmanship organized several conferences encouraging real discussions on topics with serious security implications, ranging from countering radicalization to security in cyberspace. And we will do our utmost to assist the organi organization so that proper discussion on human dimension commitments among 57 participating states, the well-known human dimension implementation meeting could take place. And here I cannot but repeat, political will is crucial. Our third and last priority is about effective multilateralism. Multilateralism, partnerships, cooperation. That's the DNA of the OSCE. Unfortunately, 
we are seeing trust and multilateralism eroding all over the world. At the beginning of our chairmanship, we set a task for ourselves to do utmost to revive the OSCE's partnerships with other multilateral actors, to allow us to create more spaces for sharing and exchange. I personally engage with the United Nations, European Union, Council of Europe, and NATO. And we spoke very concretely about adjusting our cooperation frameworks. But we can also benefit from more dynamic partnerships within to use our diversity and broad membership to our advantage. Because, like it or not, from Vienna to New York, we cannot always be confident that we have our fingers close enough to the polls. Which is why we need to also hear from you, the parliamentarians. You can best connect OSC to its people. You come from all parts of the region. You know the reality, the worries, and the needs of people. You can best see sustainable development in action with every new school open, every new med medical device safeguarded, every forest cleaned up. Your perspectives allow the OSC to improve its own contribution to the implementation of Agenda 2030. And they give us all valuable food for thought and practical examples which can be replicated and strengthened as we go forward. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue working together towards achieving these noble goals. I thank you for your attention.